Hello, and welcome to week two of Critical Thinking in Global Challenges. Last week, you've learned about some essential concepts of critical thinking. Mayang presented how argument and scientific theories are built and how they rely on the strengths of the supporting evidence. You saw that the evidence is key to validating or refuting theories. And you saw that to be able to evaluate whether a theory is correct, you need to look carefully at the evidence given. This week, we will expand on the concept of evidence. The learning objective of this week are to better understand where information comes from and to be able to evaluate the credibility and the relevance of the evidence given to support an argument. Evidence is information that provides the basis for a point of view. As presented last week by Mayang, evidence can be facts, experimental result, or observation from nature. To support an argument, evidence should be reliable and valid. Reliable observation or result should be objective, not subjective. Reliable data are data you can trust, data that are repeatable. If someone does the same experiment, he or she should get the same result. But of course, sometimes it's not possible to repeat an observation or an experiment for many obvious reasons. So, how can you evaluate if you cannot repeat an experiment? How to judge whether to trust data or not? Well, the first step is to assess the authorship and the nature of the source of the evidence. And ask yourself, who says so? Is it a person with expertise, knowledge and authority in a field? Is it a journalist writing for the popular press? Or is it your neighbour that heard something on the radio? If it's a person with authority in the field, are his view or her view shared with other colleagues in this field or the expert? Or is it just a single opinion, view? You should also ask, where is the information coming from? Is the information coming from an academic journal, a news article, or is it from a company website or from a blog? Can the author writing that piece of information has personal motive to support one kind of point of view? To, for example, publicize a book or sell a project? Evidence can be divided into two categories, primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources are original materials or the source where the ideas and evidence were first communicated. Secondary resources are sources that reuse information from primary sources. Secondary sources are usually less reliable than primary sources because the information might be misinterpreted when reported later or placed in a different context and so they might be less consistent with the original evidence. Some examples of reliable resources are for instance peer-reviewed journals where all the published information has been reviewed and criticised by other experts in the field before the information is published. However, even peer-reviewed journals cannot guarantee 100% reliability, because they might tend to support points of view which are well established and evidence for new ideas or different viewpoints can be overlooked. Information from website, blog and also newspaper or magazine article should be treated with caution, and this is much less likely to have been peer-reviewed. You should ask yourself, are there comments on the website and, if so, what is the quality of the comments? Do they agree or disagree? What might be the motivations of the author and the people making the comments? When evaluating evidence in a written piece of text, such as in an article or in a book, you will be able to find a reference for each source of evidence given. Reference might be given in the text as author and year in bracket, or as number in bracket, like in this example. Reference will give you all the detail you need to find the source of the information, and thus you will be able to assess the credibility of the source. When looking at references, ask yourself whether the source is a primary or a secondary source. Is the evidence coming from a peer-reviewed article, or is it coming from an opinion piece in a news article, for instance? In addition to being reliable, Evidence must also be valid. It should be accurate and relevant to the argument or the theory it is supposed to support. To assess the validity of the evidence, you need to evaluate the information and its analysis, how the evidence has been interpreted. You should ask, is the evidence accurate? Is the evidence relevant or out of context? Is the evidence a representative example? Let's look at sample argument supported by sample evidence. Here, the argument is, France is a rainy country. My aunt in Paris says it rains 360 days of the year. All supermarkets sell umbrella. 
I visited my own last year and it rained the entire weekend I was there. Let's take that in steps. In the first instance, the evidence given to support the argument is inaccurate. It almost certainly doesn't rain 360 days per year. If you were to look at accurate record of rainfall in France over the past 100 years, the average value is about 100 days per year. In the second instance, the evidence all supermarkets sell umbrella is irrelevant to the argument. Supermarkets will sell umbrella regardless of how rainy it is in France. And finally, I visited my auntie last year and it rained for the whole weekend. This evidence is not representative to support the argument. The fact that it rained in one city for two days is not representative of the whole country during the full year. In summary, to evaluate the credibility and the relevance of evidence, you should look at whether the evidence is reliable by looking at its nature. Is it an objective fact or subjective opinion? The author and whether the information comes from a primary source or a secondary one. You should also evaluate how accurate and relevant the evidence is. Is the evidence taken out of context and is it relevant to the topic? By looking at all these parameters, you will be able to conclude whether the evidence is credible and relevant to the argument. Make sure to look at all the parameters, not just at one. For instance, do not just consider who says so. Remember, just because an expert in a field says something, that it's necessarily correct. As seen last week, all theories are subject to revision and change with new information. So this week, we've learned how to evaluate evidence by assessing its relevance and its credibility. Now make sure to do exercise to check that you've understood what we've learned this week and to put in practice what we've learned this week. In this week exercise, you will be able to practice identifying reliable resources and practice how to assess evidence using all the parameters presented today. So good luck, I hope you will enjoy doing the exercise, and I see you next week.